This week on Dear Veronica, have you been slacking off in unusual ways, like playing new Steam games, for example? This intro references two questions. Oh yeah, you know you drive me crazy. Where the f is my laptop? Hello everyone and welcome back to Dear Veronica. I'm your host, Veronica Belmont. If you've been watching this show, you know that I'm something of a Slack fangirl. I belong to no fewer than 12 different Slacks, and if I had my druthers, I'd figure out a way to cut out email entirely and only use Slack as my communications platform of choice. I even have a pair of coveted Slack socks. But recently, I received an email from Twitter user at RBDGSWG, RidbigSwig. I have no idea how I'm supposed to say that out loud, sorry. Dear Veronica, what are some creative uses for Slack? Probably the most interesting use I've participated in is conference back channels. Two small events I've spoken at in the last year, XOXO in Portland and Epicurance in Tahoe, both use Slack as a back channel for attendees. There are all sorts of channels, different topics, and it's just a really good way for people to get to know one another better. Now, this of course would be harder for a huge event like South by Southwest or CES, but for smaller ones, it really works great, but I wanted to know what you guys thought since maybe there's another use case I hadn't thought of yet, so I posted it to Twitter. At Caleb McDonald says, we use Slack HQ as a family communication center. Young nephews, nieces with kids channel, parents with private one, etc. Nice, that's a really great idea. I actually know a ton of people, myself included, who use Slack to keep family stuff organized. It's a great idea to plug the kids in there as well on their own channel. However, they're probably plotting your demise or something. At Huggable Square says, I use Slack in combo with Mumble for my friend group. Side note, I love this idea, but I wonder how necessary it will be now that Slack is adding voice chat to the platform. Anyway, good solution for larger groups. R. Gordo says, to survey members and vote on common responses with thumbs up or thumbs down buttons. This is cool because you're basically using the emoji feature in a totally new way. Love this. Okay, great ideas, you guys. I hope this helps with the big swig, or whatever your name is. With the big swig. <laughs> Up next, a question about one of my favorite products, Steam. Dear Veronica, I want to take advantage of Steam sales, but don't want to play at a desk all day. Are there any good slash affordable PCs that I can plug into my TV and play like a console? Oh man, Steam sales really are the best, aren't they? The only way to make them even better is to enjoy them from the comfort of your couch. Here to talk a little more about that is my friend Roger Chang, producer of Daily Tech News Show and big time PC gamer. Now this answer will be based on whether or not you already own a gaming PC. If you don't have one, Valve actually offers a line of Steam machines. These are small form factor gaming PCs from a variety of vendors like Alienware and Main Gear that are designed to sit alongside your HDTV. However, there is a caveat. Steam machines run Valve's Steam OS, which is fine if you only play games from Steam. But if you want to play, say, something from EA's origin service, or Blizzard's Battle.net, say like Hearthstone, you're going to be out of luck because, well, frankly, you need a Windows box. Prices for Steam machines start around $500 and up to and well over $1,500. Gaming PCs start around the mid $500 to well over $2,000. Now, if you already have a gaming PC, you can get a super long HDMI cord or just move your gaming PC next to your TV and get a wireless controller like an Xbox 360 controller, then set Steam to big picture mode and sit in your couch. But if that's too kludgy for you, you should check out Steam's in-home streaming function. It allows you to stream gameplay from your gaming PC straight to your HDTV over your network. You can reuse a PC with Steam installed connected to your HDTV, or you can use Steam's own Steam Link box, which costs $50. Now, the Steam Link box doesn't come with its own controller, so you're going to have to spend an extra 50 bucks for a Steam controller, or use an Xbox One, Xbox 360 wired or wireless controller with it. In terms of affordability, it's probably the cheapest option out there. Nice! Thanks, Roger! You know, I actually kind of hate Roger uh, because he has one of those press accounts on Steam that lets you download like everything for free. <sighs> Whatever, but you can follow him on Twitter at Jolly Roger. Speaking of awesome pieces of software, we saw the demise of one of the greats recently, Mailbox. Just a really fantastic email client for iOS and Android that was purchased by Dropbox and then shuttered. At Cabo Wabo 79 wants to know, Dear Veronica, have you found a good app to use in place of Mailbox? So lately, I've been testing Polymail for iOS and OS X. It's in beta, and so far, it's pretty good. The biggest issue I'm having right now is that it takes a really long time on opening the app to sync your emails. I'll get a notification like on my watch that an email has arrived, but I have to sometimes wait minutes for it to actually launch on the phone. But 
it's new, so they have some kinks to work out. But you can use Gmail shortcuts, and it has a nice contact info pane that lets you see all your messages from that particular person, and you can sort through attachments as well. Plus, you can schedule emails or put them off until later. Airmail is another favorite of mine, and I actually may be going back to that one at some point. Mailbox is dead. Long live Mailbox. Thanks for your questions, everyone. Keep sending them in on Twitter using the hashtag Dear Veronica, and have a fantastic week. What are some creative uses for Slack? Uses. Young nephews and nieces with the kids. At R. Gordo says, sorry. There are channels on all sorts of top. There are channels that I, cause I just didn't write well. That's why I can't say it.